All right, ladies and gentlemen, guys, we'd like to welcome you to the show. This is your host of the evening, DJ Just JOK. Guys, we're bringing you part three of this story that comes out of Detroit. This is another wild, crazy story. The reason why this story is crazy is because I actually broke this last weekend, and we're still getting more information just from this one story. I brought you guys a little bit of an update, so if you guys haven't seen it, just go back and watch it. I've been making these videos really, really short for you guys, anywhere from... 10 minutes to like 20 minutes. They're really, really short. You don't have to watch them for two, three hours to find out what's going on. So here we go. Four additional cremated remains have been located inside the Cantrell Funeral Home in Detroit. This news comes after the 11 fetuses that I originally had reported were found in the ceiling of a funeral home on Friday, October the 12th. According to a new owner, of the building and his name is Naveed Saeed and you guys will see him on the screen here in a little bit. So that's actually Saeed right there. But he's not the owner of the funeral home. He's just the owner of the building now because they got closed down back in April and he bought it and took it over. So he's trying to clear this whole thing out just to kind of let you guys know about him. So according to him, the most recent remains were found in boxes in the funeral home's basement. Man, that's got to be like some scary stuff, man. Like, for real. Like, would that freak some of you guys out? Like, if y'all had to go and search this funeral home and you're finding dead bodies all over the place? Yes, Tommy refers to this place as the toilet. Yes, he does. Absolutely. Now, a worker in the funeral home was doing electrical work in the basement and he discovered the cremated remains. And his name, actually, he spoke with Ali Hoxie of the uh, the local news station. And I'm going to show you guys her live in a little bit. He said, I kept seeing this black box that was in my way. And his name was Joseph Summers, a worker who found the ashes. So as I moved it to the right, I happened to notice that it was the remains of ashes of someone. Some loved ones that were basically thrown away like trash. That's insane. Guys, do me a favor when y'all come in. Do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. It'll share the show and let other people know that we're alive so other people can come over and come check out the show, right? Because we got people over there that are doing shows about me and about Tommy and they don't want to grow up and let the shit go and move on like they, they act like females. I don't really understand that shit, but I will tell you this. We're going to keep pushing. We're going to keep doing our stories and we're going to keep advocating for children first here at the Soda You Dig. That is what we do here. That is our mission. That is our goal. And that is why we are growing. And those other people aren't. Let's keep going. Now, Syed purchased the closed funeral home with plans of turning it into a community center, which I think, again, is kind of scary to turn a funeral home into a community center. But we'll see what happens. All right. He says the latest remains were discovered over the past two days. The remains found in the boxes were labeled with names. However, no medical paperwork was found. And just to let you guys know, I don't know if they're going to tell you this or not, but some of the boxes actually are missing names. So they are just unmarked remains. It's just insane. This shows how neg negligent uh, people were and how unprofessional it was, Syed said. This is not how you practice mortuary science, and this is not ethical or moral. The Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, otherwise known as LARA, has confirmed that four cremated remains were found and that those remains have since been transported to Verhaden Funeral Home in Eastern. So you guys will see their picture up on the screen here in a little bit also. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to waste a lot of you guys' time, and I know it's laggy. I'm sorry about that. Let me try to fix it real quick. Hold on. Give me just a moment. Again, guys, sorry about the fact that it's real laggy. I'm sorry about that. I know it's lagging. There's not much I can really do about it. So I'm going to try to fix it. Hold on. Let me fix the chat. Come on, man. Seriously? Hold on, guys. Hold on. Let me try to fix this chat for you. Okay, there we go. All right, sorry about that. I see you guys typing in the chat, so here we go. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Thank you for saying that, Brandy. This is 
absolutely insane. So here we go, guys. Let me give you guys a fair usage, and we're going to go ahead and start. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. So for you guys that wonder why Tommy calls Detroit the America's toilet or the toilet, then this ought to let you know why he calls it that because this is absolutely insane. Listen to this. This is actually about a lawsuit that's going on now with the families and I think they are rightfully owed a lawsuit. And then we're gonna go ahead and tell you guys a little bit more in depth about what the people actually found. A million dollar lawsuit brings new allegations as Detroit police try to find out who hid the bodies of 11 infants in the ceiling of Cantrell Funeral Home? A widow claims the funeral home also mishandled her husband's burial. 7 Night News reporter Kimberly Craig talked to Raymond Cantrell II and joins us live tonight. So, Kim, what's his response to this lawsuit? Well, Alan and Glenda, Mr. Cantrell says he really can't comment on the lawsuit because he says one of his former employees actually handled this family and worked with them. And when it comes to the mummified remains of the fetuses that the medical examiner is now trying to identify. Cantrell says they had to have been hidden in that false ceiling long before he arrived in 2017 to run the funeral home founded by his late father. I believe they all happened somewhere in that vicinity nine, ten years ago. That's my feeling. I don't believe anything like that occurred uh, definitely during the period of time that I was there. I want you guys to listen to what this fool, and I'm calling him a fool for a reason. This was the original owner, Raymond Cantrell II, and I'm going to tell you guys something. They had already been violated by the state plenty of times. They had plenty of violations during his tenure there. All right? So for him to make it seem like this is just somebody else, it had nothing to do with him. It was before I got, no, no, no. I want you guys to listen to what he had to say again. I believe that this is bull crap. What's up, Kelly Brown Eyes and everybody else that um, I didn't get a chance to uh, to say hi to? I'm going to say hi to all you guys. What's up? What's up? Let's keep going. Here we go. Listen to him again. This is Raymond Cantrell finally coming out and opening his mouth and 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 letting the people know at least something. I believe they all happened somewhere in that vicinity nine, ten years ago. That's my feeling. I don't believe anything like that occurred uh, definitely during the period of time that I was there. Raymond Cantrell II talking about the bodies of the 11 babies that were found in the false ceiling of the funeral home he once operated. And today the Wayne County Medical Examiner said they are working with local and state officials to identify the remains of the 11 fetuses, but they are mummified and they'll have to rely on records from the funeral home to positively identify them. The chief medical examiner says they are working quickly, but that the process could take weeks or months. And in another development involving the old Cantrell funeral home today is a $1 million lawsuit. A woman named Kathleen Bronner accuses the funeral home of botching her husband's burial. And there's a good chance that she's going to win a shit ton of money behind this. You always fall for way more than what you can actually get just because... I don't think money can ever heal the fact that you just outright botched somebody's burial. Like that's just, that's like the worst thing you could possibly do. That's like the worst slap in the face when you're already sad about losing a loved one. If you guys are watching, we got about 90 people watching. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. I know a lot of you guys are watching like 10 other live streams right now, but if you would do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. I know you guys are going back and forth. Hit the thumbs up, please. The lawsuit accuses the funeral home of failing to store his body properly and then telling Jewelry Bonner's widow that his body was not fit for an open casket. Now, you, I, I hope you guys heard that. Afro Delica said, this is why black businesses suffer because of weird stuff like this. Remember when I told you guys about the Fight Club daycare? Supposed to be the, the biggest black daycare in the United States. And then they had a fight club with toddlers. We got to start holding our own people accountable because it makes us all look bad when we have stories like this. Let's keep going. 
They then had to cremate Mr. Bonner, and the family says instead of cremated remains, they were given some unknown substance. It was just six months ago when state inspectors forced the Cantrell Funeral Home to shut down after they say they found deplorable conditions, including decomposing bodies. And as the medical examiner tries to identify the fetuses and police try to find out who actually hid their bodies in the funeral home, Raymond Cantrell II said he would absolutely talk to detectives if they called him. But so far, he says, he has not been contacted. I'm telling you guys, that's a lie because the chief, the chief of police and the, uh, the head of Lara tried to contact him. I know that because I've been, I've been watching and following this story since it, it first broke. The remains were found in the basement of first rule of fight club is don't talk about fight club. <laughs> I got that. Look, I'm usually not very, very fast. I'm not fast like Tommy. I'm really not. But I caught that. The remains were found in the basement of the former funeral home. This development coming to light in just the past few hours. A worker stumbled across the find while cleaning it out. Defender Karen Drew spent most of the day at the funeral home and has exclusive new information, Karen. Kim and Devin, I did not expect this was going to happen today. Now, I just left the funeral home actually talking to the worker who made that discovery. Now, we are talking about cremated remains just found, not of one body, but of four different people. The little closet here. The current owner of the building, Naved Syed, showed me where the... Now again, the guy that you see on the screen right there, Naved Syed, he's the current owner of the building. He was not the owner of the actual business of the funeral home. So not, not him. He just bought the building since they shut it down in April. So let's, let's make sure we clear that up. Decomposing bodies of 11 infants were found up these steps behind all of this insulation. Right there. Yeah. I took a look myself because I was like so many, wondering how these bodies could have been hidden without anyone noticing. He walked past about 10, 15 times here. Never seen this thing. And that's when our story took a grisly and disturbing turn. And that isn't the only discovery that's been made. We just found out more remains have just been found down these steps in the basement. The remains of two people were found today and another two people just a couple days ago. Somebody said tales from the hood in Detroit. <laughs> tales from Detroit, the hood. I, I feel you. Guys, is that not scary and nasty? It just, like, that's, that's repulsive. Like, what? Here in the basement, one of the workers was here this morning cleaning. He tells me he found the remains of one individual in a plastic bag and a plastic container over behind this shelf. And then way back there in the dark, in the corner, he found the remains of another person just thrown away like trash. The worker who made the find didn't want to talk on camera. Understandably, many are worried there could be more discoveries. Still, so much to clean. The facility so large. I also made a stop at the AQ Cantrell Funeral Home in East Point. Now, this is where state investigators... They said AQ. It's QA, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Now, with them stopping by this funeral home, this is what uh, they were trying to clarify, that these are two different locations. QA Cantrell Funeral Home is different than the Cantrell Funeral Home in Detroit, which is uh, 10400 Mac Avenue in Detroit. So those are two different locations, just to let you guys know. Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Man, I know that place had to have smelled like dead people. And you're just storing them there like, what? The AQ Cantrell Funeral Home in East Point. Now, this is where state investigators made a surprise inspection yesterday after receiving a tip. I went inside. No one was willing to talk. In an issued statement. And just to let you guys know. They're trying to make sure and separate themselves from the other funeral home. They're saying they don't have anything to do with the other funeral home, even though it's the same family. They are related to each other. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Now, that's the truth. From the attorney representing the East Point facility, he said nothing out of order was found. It is unfortunate that some individuals are implicating my client. Meantime, back at the Detroit Cantrell Funeral Home, the cleanup continues. The owner turning this place into a community center. But first, planning on a prayer service this weekend for those who still have so many unanswered questions on who has been left behind here. That prayer. I want to. I want to know from you guys because we have a lot of people that try to say, "Well, white people do it too," and that this is about white supremacy and all of that. 
Who do we have to blame for this? Can we blame white supremacy for this? Can we blame white people do it too for this? Can we blame President Donald Trump for this happening? Is this Donald Trump's fault? Is this the government's fault? Is this Black Lives Matter? Is this the police's fault for this happening? Can anybody explain that to me? For the people that keep saying that I'm the one that's wrong for continuing to talk about these stories and bring them up, then who do you put the blame on for this? We got about 110 people watching. Can y'all, the new people, hit the thumbs up, please, when y'all come in. It'll share the show and let other people know that we're live. Please, if y'all would, do that for me. Here. That prayer service will take place this Saturday. I'll post more details on the website. Now, as for the remains that were found of the four different people, the new owner did contact the state. Investigators have picked up those remains, and their investigation continues. Oh, man. So yeah, they're going to continue to investigate this for sure. So let's loved to ones through Cantrell Funeral Home. The state shut down the facility back in April. Last week, the remains of 11 babies were found in the ceiling of the building. This leaves family members with a lot of questions. Here's Fox 2's Hillary Golston. Think it was rituals going on there? Darcy Ann, absolutely not. This was not, this was not. I think Afro-Delica, I think Afro-Delica might be right. Backdoor abortions, I think that's probably the case. I do believe that. Because they don't have any type of medical records for some of them. So Afrodelica might be on to something. This is, of course, this is all speculation. We're not saying for sure. There might have been some backdoor abortions going on. But do I think it was rituals? No. What I think it was, was it was literally about money. That's it. Whatever allowed them to maximize their profit and put more money into their pocket and go around this legal system, this scientific system, you know, this this entire funeral home mortuary science system. Everything that they were doing wrong, in my opinion, was about them trying to make money. That's what I think. The family of a 12-year-old killed in a hit and run on Gratiot near Six Mile went through Cantrell Funeral Home for his final services. They did the same for several family members, including a one-year-old child who died prematurely. And right now, all they can do is wonder. We dealt with him for so many years. We trusted him. We trusted him. And to think that our loved ones ain't buried or at peace is so not cool. So not cool. Deshaun was only 12 when he died. His mom chose Cantrell like her family did for a grandparent, stepdad, cousin, and a one-year-old niece. Looking at that little casket on the news has their whole family concerned. My sister don't have paperwork on her baby from Cantrell. She don't know where her baby is at. That's got to be really, really disturbing, man. Uh, Kelly Brown out said, doesn't the state pick up unclaimed bodies at funeral homes? Guys, this is my first time even hearing anything about funeral homes at all. I don't know anything really like that. Late turn. Yes. Yes, Cami MC. More bodies. This is on top of the 11 that was already found. They found four additional and then they found just some random uh, groups of ashes. And now you're hearing other people that found out that the ashes that they had weren't actually from the person that was cremated. I'm going to say that again. There are some families that went through Cantrell Funeral Home that got ashes of somebody or something that was not their loved one. They are suing them for millions of dollars. Rightfully so. What's up, P-Man 007? My guy, what up? There are like hundreds of people wondering how to confirm whether loved ones now gone were handled properly. The remains of 11 fetuses stuffed in a ceiling at the former Cantrell funeral home, reigniting questions after Cantrell was shut down in April for having moldy and deteriorating bodies. Well, it's hard. He's my last of kin. Earl Lewis. I want you guys to hear this story. This is the one that's really messed up. As I'm going to tell you guys, this has got to be real sad. This man right here is the last living person in his lineage. When his brother died, he was trying to get a hold of his brother's ashes and they refused him. Listen to his story. What's up, Davon? What up, bro? No, I can see you. I can see you, man. What up, bro? 
only has one question. How do I get the ashes of my brother Elvis, who passed away in February? Now, they said that uh, somebody told us that they sent his remains to Flint, Michigan, and I'm wondering why they didn't send it to me. Are you his next of kin? Yeah, I'm the only kin left. He said he's the only kin left. And I'm going to tell you guys, the way he said that, I mean, he looked, he looks sad, man. That's got to be a, a hard thing to have to live with. The last person that you were kin to. In February. Now, they said that uh, somebody told us that they sent his remains to Flint, Michigan. And I'm wondering why they didn't send it to me. Are you his next of kin? Yeah, I'm the only kin left. Lewis's family had Elvis cremated with Cantrell. After the funeral home went under in April, we're told a funeral home in Flint took possession of hundreds of cremated remains from... Excessive 65 said, why aren't they in jail? They're looking at potentially getting these people criminal charges. What's up, Breon? I'm going to say that again. They are actually looking at giving these people criminal charges and they're going to be uh, they're going to have civil lawsuits against them. Got 125 people watching. If you would do me a favor and just hit the thumbs up. It'll share the show. Guys, I got another exclusive interview uh, coming up here in just a second that um, she streamed it on Facebook Live, but I found it and I'm going to show you guys that here in just a moment. Home went under in April. We're told a funeral home in Flint took possession of hundreds of cremated remains from Cantrell. Elvis is included. I'm, I'm done talking. Have okay. a good day. Okay. And see, and they just, every time they try to reach out to the people that are involved in this, they just keep hanging up on them. And I think that's bullshit. I really do. You hear that, Risha? That's crazy. They, like, every time these news people keep reaching out to them, they keep hanging up on them. We spoke with the funeral home holding the ashes. They say they fulfilled their obligation to the state and later punted the football, adding an entirely different funeral home is now taking over. You know, I'd like to, you know, know what, I want the remains of my brother. And it's been hard for me to get him. An anonymous tip leading state officials to the disturbing discovery, opening many old wounds in the process. In terms of the remains of those 11 infant bodies found in the ceiling at Cantrell Funeral Home, the Wayne County Medical Examiner is now investigating. They are going to do the identification of the remains and then match them to families. In That's got to be hard to do. They, they got to freaking go through this discovery process to find out whose remains was what, when, where, why. Man. That is insane. Absolutely insane. And it's just, and, and the, the, the cold part is that the only funeral homes that are going to get investigated are going to be those that people complained about. That's it. The ones that get complaints are the ones. It's like the uh, the squeaky wheel gets the uh, gets the oil. Same exact thing. They're not going to investigate any other funeral homes until somebody files a complaint on them. Now I want you to listen to this. This is a recorded conversation that she had with one of the workers that was actually finding the bodies and the ashes there. Listen to this right here. Yes, it's crazy. Do me a favor and share it with other people if y'all would please. Just hit the thumbs up if you would. Hi, everybody. Allie Hoxie here with 7 Action News. I'm down in the basement inside Cantrell Funeral Home where the discovery of four boxes containing ashes of bodies were found. Right now, I'm here with the man that found those ashes, Joe. You can feel free to look in the camera, look to me. Um, so, so, Joe, kind of uh, take me through how you found these boxes containing ashes. Okay, yeah, I was uh, actually looking for a wire. Uh, well, actually, the conduit was, I was trying to track the wire where I need to get to. And actually, a lot of debris was uh, uh, clogging the space everywhere I needed to get to. And I happened to discover that there's a block, uh, black box that was covering the uh, area that I needed to get to. So as I moved it to the side, I see that it was a name on it. And it says Cantrell. And then it says funeral. So then I happened to notice that it was uh, ashes, you know, the... Um, the cremation box so I actually put it to the side and uh, took it upstairs and uh, immediately informed my boss and let him know that these ashes was down here so so he let Syed know 
that he had found a box of ashes. God, man. Oh. So he made the contacts to call the right uh, individuals to uh, have them uh, removed. But and then I find a second one that was over here, which was also uh, cremated ashes that was underneath there. And um, got to the right person. Well, actually, I called my boss again, let him know that there was two. So that was actually two that I found. And then you ended up finding two more. Uh, yes. So four all together, all on on here, right? On yes, this underneath, underneath this so, uh, so board right here. So show me real quick underneath here. Sorry, I don't want to. Yeah, it's still a lot of debris is still underneath here. I'm turning and on my light. So they were literally, they weren't even on the shelf. No, they were it's under the shelf there with a lot of debris and covering you, it up. And for people that can see, there's still debris under here. So you can imagine just how much more. And this is after you've cleaned it. Yes. How much more debris was under here? just sitting with what used to be people you know just you know what what is that like for you realizing um you know finding these ashes and realizing these used to be people well it, i felt a little bit sick. and again shout out to ali hoxie uh for letting me use this video and and by the way we're using this video by way of fair use but this is an exclusive interview with one of the workers that's now there since they closed down the funeral home that and because of the simple fact that you know somebody's loved one just tossed away like trash you know so i felt a little bad because uh butters i love your profile i'm telling you butters i need you in my chat more often because i am a huge huge south park fan very huge and he said if they can if they if proper records were not kept it's going to be real hard to find out the identities think about this guys the little girl that i did the story on yesterday because the grandmother burnt that little girl up in an oven and she was so badly burnt they weren't able they weren't able to to um to do any type of uh, of autopsy for, find out anything on her like it destroyed any level of forensic evidence so imagine if someone has been cremated and you have zero information to go on because one thing that I do know about the burning process, I wasn't very good in school, but I did pay attention in science class. And I know that when you burn something, it changes the chemical compound. So it turns from one thing into something completely different. When you burn something, you set it on fire, it's going to burn and change from one thing into something completely different. So if you've burned a body all the way through, through and through, and burned it to nothing but ashes, I'm sorry, they're not going to be able to find out who the fuck ashes are. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust, they're not going to be able to figure it out. Sorry. That's fucked up that the families are going to have to go through that. Uh, Kelly Brown Eyes, uh, send, it, send it to me. Send it to me if you would. Need to be informed, you know, so that way they can at least have some type of closure knowing that, you know, uh, a family member is now being taken good care of now being Kelly, uh, excuse me, Kitten Paw said they went bankrupt and just didn't care after that. So again, like I said, this was all about money. A chemical change, oxidation. Thank you guys very much. Put in the right place. So, you know, at least I felt a little better about that. So for people that are just joining us right now, I'm inside the basement of Cantrell Funeral Homes down here where the... Uh, he said he works for a funeral home. Uh, MFSVH. This dude actually works for not uh, for Saeed. Saeed is the new owner. Saeed took over the building, not the funeral home, but he took over the building that used to be the funeral home. And now the black dude that she's interviewing is the current worker for Saeed. He didn't work for the actual funeral home. All they're trying to do is they're trying to clean the funeral that what used to be the funeral home. They're trying to clean that out and make room for their community center. Just, uh, just to clarify. Discovery of boxes containing ashes of human remains were found. They were actually found by this man, Joe Summers. Uh, how long have you worked uh, here? Well, actually, I've been here for like about three weeks, you know, doing. You hear that? So I was right. He said three weeks. He's been there about three weeks. So he just started working for Saeed. An electrical and uh, help also cleaning up. So I've been here like about, well, about two or three weeks now. 
Um, and, and you had a really good point too when we were speaking a little bit earlier. I asked you, does it make it, you know, discovering these four boxes, does it make you nervous that you're going to be finding more human remains? No, it don't. Uh, I don't feel any. Uh, I don't feel nervous or anything. But it helped give me a little closure, and I hope that it give the family members a little closure. You know, knowing that now that you know, they've been discovered and found, you know. So I'm, it doesn't really bother me. I'm just hoping that we don't find any more. That's what I'm basically concerned about. Um, just to let you know what people are saying on Facebook, they're saying, thank you, Joe, that, you know, one person called you a hero for finding these ashes <laughs> and bringing them home to their family. Yeah. Does, does it make you feel good inside? Yeah, a little bit it does, but like I said, it gives me some closure and I hope that it gives them a little closure also. Um, I'm trying to answer some question now. Are the ashes of the families never picked up? That, that's the big question right now that we really don't now know is why these ashes were placed underneath a shelf, um, why they were left here. Um, that's what is still under investigation from Michigan, from Laura. They're the ones that handle licensing and they handle licensing for funeral homes. So Laura is still investigating why these ashes were not given to their loved ones. Um, you know, if it was something where someone didn't pay, but even if they didn't pay or, or whatever the reason is, um, these ashes were still left in a place that they shouldn't be. So, um, and people are still saying way to go Joe they're very um, they're very grateful for you because I'm sure now um, one more thing I'm sorry I'm, I'm trailing off here a little bit um, the, the boxes uh, did they have anything on them names dates medical records well it just had the birth, basically the person's name and uh, the birth date the year they passed away and uh, Cantrell uh, funeral services that was basically all I seen so they're gonna have to hope that they can match it up that way, man. That's that's so sick, man. All right, so at least that's some good news that at least these boxes had some names on there, had some dates on there. So hopefully they'll be returned to their loved ones. Yes. Um, for those of us, some people have just started joining. Can you take us through one more time how you found these ashes? Yeah, because like I said, I was doing electrical work and uh, I needed actually a path cleared for me to get to the uh, conduit and the wire that I needed to see. But like I said, a lot of debris was blocking my way. So I, like I said, the uh, black box was pushed up with a lot of debris. So I had to move it over to the side. But like I said, I happened to notice that it was a person's name on it and it says cream, uh, cream, uh, cremation on it. So, and I was like, no, I have to pull that out. At least let uh, the right person, I had to get in contact with my boss and let him know that these uh, ashes was there. I agree. Uh, who was that that said that? Um, Boneham, and shout out to Boneham, said uh, some people don't pick up their family ashes and they can sit on the shelf for decades. At the same time, I think that kind of goes with the territory of owning a funeral home, but I, there's got to be some level of something legal that you can do, whether you can be allowed to, discard them in some way there's got to be some level of uh of of provision in the law that will allow you to do something that um doesn't break any level of of legal or moral code there's got to be something i just like we said earlier in the chat i just think that cantrell funeral home did not give a damn and the remains were taken to another funeral home in town uh, I believe so. Yep. And um, for those who are just joining us, I want to show you where these... Oops, let me turn the light back on. These ashes were found not on top of the shelving unit, under the shelving unit. And so you can see down here just how much debris is still down here. And this is after cleaning and doing work. So you can imagine... Um, the condition that these ashes were found in. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up, but we'll have the full story for you tonight on uh, TV 10, or I'm sorry, TV 20 at 10 p.m. And we'll also have this on WXYZ at 11, channel 7. Thank you for joining us. All right, guys, and let me Hi, everybody. let me stop it right there and let me go ahead and give um, another shout out. We have... Uh... Actually, Neil sent, <laughs> what's crazy, guys, is Neil sent through three donations. Neil, if you're in the chat, bro, if I could give you like a super wrench, I would do it right now. Neil sent three donations through, and I want to say thank you to my bro. The one and only person that sent something through is all good. Nobody's required to do it, but thank you for the ones that just choose to do it and show love to the show. I definitely appreciate that big time. Here's the last video, and we're going to wrap up. This is the actual 
uh, Detroit Police Department chief, and his name is James Craig. Listen to this. The condition of the ashes, they're ashes. They're, they've been just sitting, to be honest with you, uh, Boneham. I mean, it's just, they're just ashes. I know, I, I know there's not much of an answer, but that's really all they are. The Detroit Police Department responded out uh, late afternoon, early evening, uh, to a call from a uh, state regulatory agency referred to as LARA, as the License and Regulatory Affairs. Uh, they were in the process of investigating a civil matter involving the funeral home. In fact, uh, uh, they had gone to that location on two prior occasions. But we'll first talk about Friday. Uh, when they respond to the location, they notify the Detroit Police Department. And uh, we entered the location, and what we found uh, was 10 fetuses uh, and one full-term child. Now, what was described uh, at the location, uh, the 10 fetuses were in a, uh, a simulated cardboard box. I believe they were wrapped. Uh, and then the full-term uh, infant was placed in a very small coffin. Uh, they, uh, those, both the fetuses and the full term, a child was secreted in an attic area of the funeral home. Uh, so from that, uh, we uh, decided that the Detroit Police Department would open a criminal complaint against the funeral home, uh, given uh, what we had learned about this investigation. Now, as I indicated, we had responded out on two prior, we didn't respond out, but Laura had responded out on two prior occasions, the first time in April of 2018. Uh, and it was at that time, and I think you covered this story, uh, 20 to 21 uh, deceased persons were discovered. Let me give a shout out to, uh, to Karen. Karen is in the chat, man. I want to say much love. Thank you very much to Karen. Also, my boy, DGEPB uh, sent some love through the Venmo. That's pretty neat. I didn't know Venmo could, uh, could send you a notification like that. That's pretty cool, man. So thank you, DGEP, and thank you to Karen. Karen, who's in the chat, man, much love and big hugs to Karen. Thank you very much to both of you guys. I, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, nothing but good love and vibes come. Karen, thank you guys so much, man. That, that really it means a lot. Like I said, you know, you guys do it consistently. All I ask is for like the new people that never got a chance to donate. Like if they would just start at a dollar. New people. Even if they just did it once a month. You know what I mean? But for the people that have the blue wrenches are people that do it like all the time. So thank you to you guys. Uh, they were recovered. And then following that in August 2018, uh, there was an anonymous telephone tip. Uh, that Laura received and they responded back to the location and at that time they recovered one fetus uh, and some remains that were cremated and so this last one on Friday where we got involved uh, there was an anonymous letter that was sent to Laura uh, and that's how we got involved in this so that's where we are at this point uh, again uh, the Detroit Police Department has opened a criminal investigation on allegations of uh, a felony, a final disposition. So you heard that they opened up a criminal investigation and these are felony charges that could potentially occur. So for everybody that was wondering, felony charges could be pending. And Miss June Bennett, I, I will check your email as soon as we get wrapped up. And I appreciate you sending me that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Who made the call? Afrodelica. They've said it a few times. It was anonymous. So, so I'm assuming what it was, was somebody did not want to be found out for telling on the funeral home. Hi, Crystal Chan. That is my sweetheart. That's my baby. That is my firstborn. And I love you. Thank you, Crystal Chan. Uh, of a dead body, which is titled in the statute. In my 41 and a half years, I have never heard of such a case. Uh, it's deeply troubling, in fact, so much so that our officers that responded out on Friday, uh, one of the things that we do on a regular basis when they're faced with a critical incident, we debrief uh, and we uh, dispatch our peer support team to go out and meet with those officers. Fortunately, 
some of the fetuses were marked and so that might help us in our investigator efforts. There are others that um, there's going to be a challenge, undoubtedly. And so we don't know how the funeral home came in possession. It's all speculation at this point, uh, but uh, I'm sure we'll find out more as we move forward with the investigation. The Detroit Police Department responded out uh, late afternoon, early evening, uh, to a call from a state regulatory agency referred to as LARA, as the License and Regulatory Affairs. Uh, they were in the process of investing. So again, guys, we're going to wrap it up right there. And I'm going to say thank you guys for coming through to the show. For the people that want to understand what is actually going on here, what is the synopsis, and what is my opinion about this? The synopsis is, is criminal charges are pending. The funeral home is shut down. It's been shut down since April. All of these things are just coming out as of just this past Friday. So we were one of the first people to actually break this story. So if you guys ever hear about somebody talking about that, um, that there were 11 bodies in a, in, a, in a ceiling of a funeral home and then these extra four bodies. Just know that a lot of you guys heard it here first at the Soda You Dig when we broke it on like really early Saturday morning because it, was, it came out like Friday at like, like 11 or something like that. It was literally going into Saturday and I was, uh, I was literally within one or two hours of hearing that story break. So we caught it pretty early on. So I want to say thank you for the people that continue to support. Like, share, and subscribe if you guys haven't hit the like button. Hit it on the replay.